Betty! Betty, it's Jimmy! Mr. Durham, something's happened to Betty. Force the door open. Singing violin. Betty, darling. The singing violin. It was here again. I saw it. I heard it. The singing violin. I heard it. Betty. I saw it. Give her one of these. It's the sedative Dr. Marino left for her. She will attend to my stepdaughter. Perhaps you wondered, Willand, why I invited you to my home as my weekend guest. I thought our coming marriage, Betty's and mine, had something to do with it, sir. Uh, no. I wanted you to see for yourself why that marriage can never take place. I don't understand, sir. Are you blind, Willand? After what you've just witnessed, don't you realize that my stepdaughter is losing her mind? She never told me. Naturally. Dancing skeletons, headless men, and tonight, a singing violin. Surely, sir, it must be merely her imagination. Nightmares. But she insists the things that she sees are real. Positive proof of incipient dementia precox. I regret to have to tell you this, my boy. My doctor informs me that in a matter of weeks, if not days, Betty must be certified as hopelessly mad. Thompson file, Wilkins. You know that hatchet killer? Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes did a neat bit of work on that case, don't you think, sir? Might I remind you, Wilkins, that Scotland Yard also worked on that case? Yes, sir. What shall I do with the file, sir? Put it in the case's closed file, of course. Very good, sir. Crime seems to be falling off in London this week, sir. It's been a dull week. Yes, it's so dull, I'm going to do something about it. What, sir? I'm going to visit our old friend Sherlock Holmes. I've noticed that when we've got no crime, he has. <laughs> girl having hallucinations, a worried housekeeper, an austere stepfather, a heartbroken boy, a gloomy old house in a quiet section of London. That was one of the most bizarre and terrifying cases ever to challenge the talents of my extraordinary friend Sherlock Holmes. We were plunged into it one drowsy day in mid-September when murder, sudden and brutal, came calling. What is that? It sounds like a shot from the street. Stand back there. 
Stand back. What's happened to your parson? He, he's dead, sir. Dead? True enough. He's been shot. What's going on here? This man in the carriage, Inspector. Shot he was, sir. All right, let's stand back here, please. Stand back, please. Stand back. Let's move along here, please. Please. Stand back, please. Move along here, please. Stand back. Move along here, please. Move along. Officer. Yes, sir. You take charge here. Yes, sir. All right, driver. What do you know about this? Uh, I don't know. I, I was... We were... Hmm. We were about to have a visitor. Where? What do, you, what do you mean, where? Yes, a young man, but he was murdered before he reached here. Murdered? How do you know? Let's move along, please. Move along, fall over. Move along, please. Oh, hello, Lestrade. I've been expecting you. I didn't know myself I was coming here until a few minutes ago. I suppose you also know why I came here? Murder. Both Dr. Watson and I heard the shot. Uh, I observed part of the proceedings through the binoculars. This was found in his pocket. Sherlock Holmes, 221B Baker Street. Hmm. Hmm. He was obviously employed by a tea and spice merchant. The aroma is unmistakable, eh, Watson? Oh, unmistakable. <laughs> the boy's wallet gave us some further information. His name was James Winnant. He lived at number five Crestwood Place. He was employed by Stackhurst and Durham, tea and spice merchants. Stackhurst. Stackhurst. Does the name mean something to you, Holmes? Well, it should. Stackhurst and Durham appears in almost every tin of tea sold in England. What was young Winnant's business with you, Holmes? Winnant. Durham. Ah. I've never heard of Winnant before. Were you able to ascertain anything from the cabby? No. One of the passers-by heard him say, the singing violin. The singing violin? No, that can't mean anything, I'm sure. Can't mean anything, Lestrade. Well, now, of course not. Get your hat, Watson. Well, where are we going home? To interview the murderer of Jimmy Winnant, of course. You mean to say you know who killed him? Of course I do. Don't you? Might I inquire who lives in this dreary monument to great wealth? Guy Durham. Durham? Wasn't he one of the partners of the firm that employed young Winnant? Yes, the only surviving member. Stackhurst died 15 years ago. Holmes, you said we were going to visit Winnant's murderer. I did. Yes? Good morning. Uh, I'm Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. I'd like a word with Mr. Guy Durham. Here is my card. I'll tell him, for all the good it'll do. He left word he doesn't want to be disturbed. Come in. Oh, permit me, madam, to congratulate you on your new position. Thank you. How do you know I'm new here? Mrs. Ferguson, who was at the door? Excuse me. How did you know? Well, she was unfamiliar with the position of the curtain cord. She obviously hasn't been employed here very long. Oh, obviously. I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Durham can't... Oh. What is the meaning of this? 
I'm sorry, sir. They pushed in before I could stop them. I must apologize for this intrusion, Mr. Durham, but it's imperative that I speak to you. Oh, very well. As long as you're here, what do you want? I take it you are Sherlock Holmes. At your service, sir. And this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Pleasure, sir. How do you do? Uh, sit down. I regret to say that I am the bearer of bad tidings, Mr. Durham. Your prospective son-in-law was murdered not two hours ago. What? Went murdered? But Holmes... The engagement announcement of Miss Betty Durham and Mr. James Winnant was published in The Times not two days ago. Mr. James Winnant was on his way to see me when he was ambushed and shot. But what did he want to see you about? Don't you know, Mr. Durham? No. Then perhaps Miss Betty, your stepdaughter, I believe. Uh, yes, Betty is my stepdaughter. I adopted her when I married her mother. Well, perhaps she might be able to provide some information. I am sorry. I'm afraid I cannot allow you to see her. She has been in a highly overwrought frame of mind of late. Only this morning, uh, under the advice of her doctor, I sent her away for a complete rest. Moreover, it is best under her present mental condition that she should remain in ignorance of Winnant's death. Oh, that's most unfortunate. Probably the excitement of her forthcoming marriage brought on uh, an emotional upset. Not only probably, Doctor, but true. And now, if you'll excuse me, I regret I cannot be of any more help to you. Oh, Mr. Durham, what is the name and address of your former housekeeper? Why do you ask? Well, housekeepers are rather hard to come by these days. If she hasn't already found a new position, I'd like to employ her. Oh, I, I prefer not to recommend my former housekeeper. I had to discharge her for theft. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Durham is the murderer, Holmes? Yes. Why are you so sure? Well, 15 years ago, Horace Stackhurst died in extremely mysterious circumstances. Stackhurst? Would that be the Stackhurst of Durham's firm? The same. Shortly after Stackhurst's death, his widow married Durham. And the widow is Betty's mother, I presume? Indeed she was. But the mother herself died within a year, and Betty inherited a great fortune. Durham was appointed guardian until such a time as Betty married. Oh, I'm beginning to understand. Tell me, Holmes, have you solved the mystery of Winnan's dying words yet? The singing violin? Oh, well, that's really very easily explained, Watson, now that the... Uh... Ah, here we are. Finished explanation, bursting with curiosity. But there was nothing I could do about it except wait for his return. I waited up for him until midnight. Finally retired without seeing him. And when I wakened the next morning, he was already gone. I didn't see him again until shortly before 10 o'clock. Hello, where have you been? Uh, do you mind going to the window, Watson? What? Uh, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, go on. All right. No, not yet, Watson. Now, turn around. Now, keep looking into the street. That's better. Ah, ah, ah. Now. Won't be a minute now. All right. Turn around. Wow. 
Well, what? A singing violin. Well, that's fantastic. Yes, a fiend with a diabolical mind, our Mr. Durham. Soap on the bow so that no sound should come from it, and this. Come along, Watson. Where to? To complete a plan which this time only you can effect. Oh, really? After you. you at last, eh? What? You've been making advances to my wife, and I am going to thrash you within an inch of your life! Wait a minute. You've got the wrong man. Don't you lie to me! I'm not John Murdoch, I tell you. Oh, there's a lunatic loose. Oh, ah, so it's a fighter one, is it? I've heard about men like you before. You don't smile at your last. My answer is final, Durham. I didn't mind certifying your stepdaughter as insane. But I draw the line at murder. If you want her killed, do it yourself. Very well, Marino. I will. But you will have to sign the death certificate. That I'll do. An overdose of morphia would be the best way. I'll prepare a hypodermic for you. She's under sedation now. And shouldn't give you any trouble. What room is she in? Number four. Something's happening out there. Let it wait. Give me the hypodermic.
hear me? Don't dare touch that girl. Don't you dare touch her. Or by all I hold sacred, I'll kill you. Durham, Durham, do you hear me? Are you all right, Holmes? The girl, is she all right, Watson? Just drugged. She'll be all right. Well, what kept you so long? Dr. Marino brought up reinforcements. When I came here and answered your summons, I found Dr. Watson fighting with four men. I must say he was holding his own. Now, will somebody please tell me what this is all about? Nothing would give me greater pleasure, Inspector. May I introduce Mr. Guy Durham, your murderer? What? <laughs> Well, of course, Watson, I knew Betty was in danger when Durham mentioned Marino. I met him before and knew he wasn't a doctor, but a charlatan. Tell me, Watson, how did Betty take the news of Jimmy's death? It came as a terrible shock to her, I'm afraid. Poor girl broke down completely. Well, she's young. She'll recover. And youth has a way of overcoming tragedy. I forgot that I soaped this bow. It'll be days before I can play again. Really? <laughs> A wonderful invention, soap. <laughs> it has so many uses. I never suspected Inspector Lestrade would shortly be accusing me of the murder of a man I had yet to meet. Uh, do you like Vorjak? Yes, he was playing sometime. I have been. Oh. Do you care to go out? Why? Oh, I know it's a walk somewhere. I feel restless. Why don't you read, Holmes? What, about the tigers of India? Well, it's jolly interesting, especially <laughs> about the female of the species. <laughs> female of the species usually is. It says here that they often attack when you think they're going to run, and run when you think they're going to attack. Fascinating. Here. Yeah. Oh, 
no really home. Now, come, come. The exercise will do you good. You mustn't allow yourself to vegetate and grow uh, static. Uh, this a man of your former violent habits. Tiger hunting in India. Force marches, Watson. Come on. All right, then. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> but only a short one, mind. Because this is no time to go promenade and blast. Bring my hat, will you? There you are, boy. Any problem? Well, look. Look, this isn't my coat. It, it ain't like it, but it, it just isn't. Too small? Well, you, yes. Well, yes, you sir. probably pick someone else up at the... But... No, I... Now, look. It's a letter on here. Maybe it's got an address. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Let's see. Twelve heroes with broken feet. Unsigned. Well, it sounds silly to me. Mm. Written by a woman and dashed off in a hurry, too. It is a bold hand, Watson. A woman of strength and character. Capable of violence, I'd say. Like your uh, tiger's friend. Which of you two gentlemen is Dr. Watson? I am, sir. Thank goodness I found you, Doctor. The clerk from attendant of the club told me this must be your coat and our... Ah, yes, I, I see you have it, Doctor. As a matter of fact, we've only just uh, discovered the mistake. In fact, we were on our way back to the... I say, would you mind, Holmes? Yes, of course. Yeah. Thank you. There we are. Oh! So sorry. There we are. Thank you, Doctor, and thank you. Good night, gentlemen. I'm sorry about the mistake. Good night. Good night. Say, Holmes. Yes, I know. He took your hat. Oh, no, now, really, that's gone too far. There's a limit to these things, really, these people. Well, don't worry about it, Holmes. The cloakroom will attend the club will know his name and address. Well, it doesn't matter about that. It's... I don't like wearing another chap's hat, you know. It's, it's a personal thing, a hat like... No, like a toothbrush. Here's son of a title, I see. The uh, family crest. Been to Russia, too. Samovar. A nice pair of icons. You know, it was beginning to rain when we came in here. I hope that chap's had the decency not to get my hat absolutely soaked. Hmm, Watson. Ah, I see he composes, too. Or well, someone does. Holmes, what do you think you're doing? You just can't start barging into a chap's house and start playing his piano? The violin is really my instrument, Watson, but I have a certain facility with the piano, even if I do say so. Do you know what this piece is called? No, I don't. I couldn't care less. We should stop playing that thing. The spider's web. A uh, ballet, apparently. And at this point, the spider attacks the fly. You gentlemen wish to see my husband? I'm Mrs. Chelton. How do you do? I'm Dr. Watson. This is my friend, Mr. Holmes. Oh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Madam, I've come here to return your husband's hat. He left it in our flat this evening. Oh, I thank you. I'm afraid my husband isn't home, Dr. Watson. Well, I wonder if you'd be good enough to ask him if, at his earliest convenience, he could return mine. You... My husband has other hats, perhaps you... Oh, no, no. Thank you very much indeed. I, I, I'm very partial to my own. Well, I'm sorry to have disturbed you, Mrs. Johnson. Mr. Holmes. Yes, madam? May I ask, did my husband go to your flat to consult you professionally? No, no. He merely came to return Dr. Watson's coat, which he had also taken by mistake. Then, Mr. Holmes, I would like to consult you professionally. My services are always available to anyone who has genuine need of them. My husband is in trouble. He gave us that impression. He's being blackmailed. By whom? Six months ago, we returned to London from St. Petersburg, where my husband was military attaché. During his stay in St. Petersburg, he met a ballerina named Olga Yaklanov. Yaklanov. Oh, yes, the premier danseurs with the St. Petersburg Imperial Ballet. Yes, the troupe is playing in London now. They've been here all week. When my husband met Yaklanov in Russia, they became friendly. 
Oh, it was nothing more than friendship. You see, my husband is an amateur composer, and their friendship was based on mutual love of music. I see. During their friendship, my husband disclosed some military secrets unthinkingly to Yaklanov. She demanded 5,000 pounds, but then he was transferred to London. Now she's renewed her demands. Uh, your husband has told you of this? Only of the original demand in St. Petersburg, but I know that she's renewed it here in London. Do you expect him back this evening? I don't know. His whole routine has been upset. Mr. Holmes, you must help. Madam, I detest blackmail in any form. You'll hear from me tomorrow. Oh, by the way, what was the dancer's name? Yaklanov. Oh, yes. I wonder, would you mind writing it down for me? Thank you, madam. Oh, madam, about my hat, I wonder... Yes, Dr. Watson? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Inside, Watson, not outside. Well, it must have been somebody else. Wasn't me. I'm inside too. Ah, Inspector. Rather late for Scotland Yard to be up and about, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry to get you out of bed at this time of night, Mr. Holmes. It's not a very pleasant business I've come about either. Oh, look, I say my hat. Dr. Watson. Holmes, look at this chap's done to it. It's absolutely soaked. Dr. Watson, do you wish to make a statement? You're not obliged to, but I must warn you that anything you say will be taken down and may be used as evidence. I won't half give this chap a piece of my mind when I catch up with him. I really will... What? What did you... Who'll use what again? Holmes, what's he talking about? Dr. Watson, I must question you in connection with the murder of the Honorable Harry Shelton. Murder? I'll murder him when I catch up with him. I, what? What? Mr. Chelton was found murdered in St. James's Park, and your hat, Dr. Watson, was found beside the body. An embarrassing predicament, eh, Watson? Uh, can you explain it? Well, what do you mean, can I explain it? Well, you know perfectly well how Chelton got my hat. Well, tell the man, tell him. Miss Trade, how was Chelton murdered? Stabbed, Mr. Holmes. In the back. And we haven't been able to find a weapon yet. Any other suspects? I mean, uh, apart from my old friend uh, Watson here? Well, no. Unless footpads did it. I'm sorry, Dr. Watson. That's evidence, you know. Holmes, will you kindly tell the trade how my hat got mixed up in this affair? Patience, Watson. Patience. Now go get yourself dressed. We're going to St. James's Park. If you don't mind waiting a moment, Lestrade. Oh, uh, officer, you might keep an eye on Dr. Watson while he dresses. You never know, he may try and get out through the window. Well, I... I and this is a fine example of British justice. A fella comes and pinches your hat and you accuse me of murdering him to get it back. <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing in my life. I think of all the cups of tea you've had free with us. It makes me absolutely... Well, um, the body was lying about uh, here, Mr. Holmes. I see. You removed it immediately. Well, almost immediately. Kind of bodies lying about St. James's Park, you know. Anyhow, it was raining. Yes, of course. And the poor fellow may have taken cold, or most considerate of you, Lestrade. It doesn't matter what evidence you may have destroyed. Well, from what you tell me on the way up here, things are beginning to take shape. You found anything in his overcoat? No, nothing. Only that note you were talking about. You know the one with the 12 heroes with the broken feet? Oh, that doesn't mean anything, I'm sure. No, I suppose not, Lestrade. And you were saying that things were beginning to shape up, eh? 
Oh, yes. Well, you see, Chelton met this woman in St. Petersburg. She comes to London with the ballet, and she wants to renew the friendship. He doesn't. So she lures him in here and stabs him. Very excitable, these Russian women. Take things like that seriously, you know. So all you have to do is place her here in the park, Illustrate. Exactly. You have all the evidence you need that she was here. I have? The note, Lestrade. It tells Chelton to meet her here tonight. Well, I don't see it. Twelve heroes with broken feet. What have twelve heroes with broken feet to do with her meeting him here tonight? The numeral twelve, Lestrade, obviously refers to twelve o'clock midnight. Yeah, well, what about the heroes with the broken feet? A slight confusion on the lady's part. Probably the influence of Cockney stagehands. She added an H where there shouldn't have been one. What? Then spell it as she spelled it, but without the H. E-R-O-S. Precisely, and here he is. Cupid, the Greek god Eros with his broken feet. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, then we have our murderess. It would appear so, wouldn't it? Uh, now that the case is solved, perhaps I can go home and soak my feet. No, no, I know nothing, nothing. Please leave me alone. Please, you will go. Madam, I assure Where you... Where is Sergei? Oh, Sergei, come quick, quick, help me. They want to hang your poor little Petrushka. Where is Sergei? Madam, we... Go away, you're a bad man. Disappear, please disappear. The spider's web. Chelton wrote it. Mademoiselle, perhaps you'll be good enough to write as I dictate. Twelve heroes with broken feet. No, I do not do it, I swear. He was dead already when I go to meet him. You wish to make a statement, madam? You're not obliged to do so, but I warn you that anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. He's got that expression on the brain, do not... I do nothing except dance. I do not kill. I am dancer. You do not believe me. Look, I show you. Madam, please. Please, madam, I implore you. Sergei, this I kill Harry Chelton. Me, Yaklanov. Tell them I cannot kill you in the fly. Oh. Why? Well, I, I... How do you howl, Mademoiselle Yaklanov, like this? I am Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. And Madame Yaklanov... Yaklanov and, I, is... and I am Sergei Smirnov. The director of the St. Petersburg Imperial Ballet. The Tsar himself shall hear of this outrage. Then, Mr. Smirnov, perhaps you would be good enough to explain the exact relationship between Madame Yaklanov and Mr. Shelton. Madame appears to be, to say the least of it, incoherent. Oh. So you had an acquaintance with Shelton in London? Yes, sir, Gaia. Oh. I saw him again. I meet Harry in St. Petersburg. He does not wish to be soldier boy, he tells me. He wished to make beautiful music like mm -hmm. Tchaikovsky. Uh -huh. He plays his music for me, I say. Harry, you must be better soldier boy than you are music maker. You must be. It is not possible to be worse. <laughs> Such music, like noises in the ear. <laughs> he was ridiculous. Yes? Why was he looking at you like that, madam? He has written ballet since he left St. Petersburg. The spider's web, he call it. He wished me to dance the spider. No. Me, Yaklanov, a spider. It is crazy. <laughs> and tonight you arranged to meet him in St. James's Park after the evening performance. Yes, to tell him it is finished. No more will I listen to his music. And did you meet him in the park? Yes, but I was a little late. It was very dark. I see Harry on the ground, dead. I see. You saw no weapon? No, no weapon. I'm frightened. I run away. Not bad, Mr. Smirnov. It has certain merit. Merit? Oh! Who could possibly dance to noises like that? Yeah, listen. Even it 
is all wrong. Look, it should go like this. In three, four times. Very pretty, Mr. Smirno. But we happen to have a murder on our hands. Oh, madam, does this dagger belong to you? Yes, I kill myself with it. Oh, now, really, madam, there's no need to go that far. I believe, Watson, the lady means she kills herself with it in the uh, ballet. Yes, in, in the ballet. There are some interesting traces of blood on that, Lestrade. No, no, it is not true. I'm afraid, madam, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to Scotland Yard for further questioning. You will go, Olga. It is only bluff. Yes, Sergei. I, I will dress. I will telegraph the Tsar. Himself. Personally. You will see. There may even be war. War! Foreigners. Women. Nobody could be logical about them. Not even Sherlock Holmes. Holmes, can't you think, sitting down? This is the third time I've read this page already. Yeah, Klarnow's handwriting. That's what baffles me. The hand of a strong woman. And yet you saw her, Watson. No will of her own. Absolutely no will. It's illogical. Well... The inspector seemed to think the same thing, but he's built up a pretty logical case against her with your help. Mm, perhaps too logical. Attack when you expect him to run, and run when you expect him to attack. You know, Chelton wrote pretty bad music. That could be a motive for murder. Thought about it myself on occasion. But this handwriting, Watson. If only I could get to the bottom of it. I say, Holmes, do you think they could let me have my hat back before the trial? I didn't think might drag on for days. The Lestrade keeps on saying it's evidence. Nope. There's only one thing to do. Have Lestrade confront Sergei Smirnov with Mrs. Chilton. Why? Because it's perfectly obvious why and by whom Chilton was killed. The only thing I can't get to the bottom of is this mysterious business of the handwriting. Do you know who murdered Chilton then? Yes, of course I do. Don't you? Uh Then you never met Sergei Smirnov before, Mrs. Chilton, either in St. Petersburg or London. Uh, no, Mr. Holmes. Not Mr. Smirnov, as long as you ask me to, Mr. Holmes. Oh, good. Ah! Mr. Brasier! I beg your pardon? I am furious! Right in the midst of rehearsal, I am dragged away! Well, I, I'm sure the good inspector apologized most profusely, uh -huh. Mr. Smirnov. I, I don't believe you've met Mrs. Chilton. Mm hmm? Chelsea. Who? Mrs. Uh, Chelsea. Ah, murder. Then perhaps, Mr. Smirnoff, you'd be good enough to play the introductory music to the Spider's Web Ballet for Mrs. Chelsea, as you did for us last night. Eh? Didn't it strike you as curious, Lestrade, that uh, Mr. Smirnoff should know Chelton's ballet music, which wasn't composed until after Chelton left St. Petersburg? Well, I... Uh, Yaklanoff didn't show it to him. She did everything she could to hide their meetings. That left only one place where he could have learned that music. Here, in this house, at that piano, in Chelton's absence, naturally. I don't follow you, Holmes. The budding affair of the heartless trade was not, as Mrs. Chilton would have us believe, between her husband and Mademoiselle Yaklanov, but between herself and Mr. Smirnov. Between Smirnov and Mrs. Chilton? Ridiculous. Then how did you learn Chilton's ballet? I... Do you wish to make a statement, sir? You're not obliged to do so, but I warn you that anything you say will be taken down and maybe... Are these the shoes you meant, Holmes? I believe so, Watson. 
Mrs. Chilton, did you by any chance go out last night after Dr. Watson and I departed? No, I didn't. I mean, no, I, d I didn't. Yet these are the shoes you were wearing. If you didn't go out, how do you account for the mud on the soles and the blades of grass? It didn't start to rain until after we left. Mr. Holmes, I don't think it's necessary that I explain anything. Do you, do you mean she did it or, or he did it or both? Who are you accusing of murder, Holmes? Mrs. Chilton, alone. Ah, oh. So you killed for love of me? And accomplished the double task of placing the guilt on Mademoiselle Yaksanov. You undoubtedly found her note in your husband's pocket. Ah! To kill for love. I can understand. But to blame poor little Olga. That I will never forgive. Who would replace her in the belly? You seem to forget, Mr. Holmes, that the dagger was found in Mademoiselle Yaklinov's room. Ah, yes, the dagger. When did Mrs. Chilton have the dagger, Mr. Smirnov? Three days ago. I forget to leave it here after the belly. The next day, Hélène returned it to me. With a few drops of her own blood on it. Holmes, are you sure this time? I was almost sure from the beginning, Lestrade. I just couldn't explain the handwriting and the temperament. And there really wasn't a logical explanation. I mean, the strong-minded woman with the weak handwriting and the weak-minded woman with the strong handwriting. The inconsistency of the female, Watson. Yet she was clever in engaging me to make sure that Mademoiselle Yaktanov would be suspected. Mrs. Chilton. I must ask you to come with me to Scotland Yard. Do you wish to make a statement? <clears throat> You're not obliged to, but I warn you that anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. I'm going to free poor little Olga from prison. She has suffered so. I shall dance so much better now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you mean then, Holmes, that you knew Mrs. Chelton had committed the murder, but the one thing that confused you was her handwriting? Her handwriting and character, Watson. The evidence was logical, but the uh, personalities were not. Well, they were logical enough in their way, Holmes. They were just feminine. Yes. That's it, Watson. They were just feminine. I must devote more time to that, Watson. I must devote more time to that. <laughs>